Hi, my name is Denise Deneen, and this is Holistic Happenings. I'm really excited to have Jan Lucier here, <laughs> and Jan is a holistic nurse. Thank you for coming, Jan. Thank you. I'm delighted to I'm be here. So happy to have you here. We have a lot of information to cover, mm -hmm. and so I guess we'll just start with what is a holistic nurse? Can you give me a little bit of information on sure. that? Sure. Holistic Nursing is an organization for nurses that's a specialty, just like it might be if you were a critical care nurse, pediatric nurse. And so there's special um, training that you take and there's an exam that you take to become a certified holistic nurse. It takes about two years. Okay. It's a very new specialty. Right. Uh, it just came about in the 1980s. Okay. And uh, it came about through a physician, uh, Norm Sheely, some people know his name in mm -hmm. integrative medicine uh, circles. And he was speaking to the founder of Holistic Nursing, Charlotte McGuire, and uh, they decided though there would need to be a nursing wing, not just a physician's wing of I holism. Love, I love that <laughs> idea. Mm -hmm. And you have been a nurse, a registered nurse, mm -hmm. for how long? 35 years. For 35 years. Yes. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And did you just naturally be uh, drawn to becoming a holistic nurse or is it something that you just <laughs> with your teaching because I know that you're you're a professor too you're, you're you teach mm -hmm. right well it was sort of a, a synchronicity as I see the spirit moving through people's lives and through my own life uh, it evolved nursing is my second career uh, my first mm -hmm. career uh, was really I felt called uh, both to be a nurse but also to be a spiritual healer and I was a pastor and a missionary um, when I was like uh, 19 through 35. Oh, I didn't know that, uh -huh. Jan. Yes. That's yeah. interesting. And so uh, through a number of uh, experiences, uh, not all wonderful in my life, um, which really uh, sort of shattered uh, that dream, um, I went into nursing because I needed to have money to pay for my four children. Yeah. I was a single mother. And uh, I saw a little ad after I'd been a nurse for 10 years in a, advanced nursing is a um, magazine for nurses and it said holistic nurse training. Mm -hmm. And I, I had like a visceral uh, reaction. My yes. heart was pounding and I heard you need to go. Right. And so I went to the training and it really filled in a hole that was in my nursing practice that really was lacking the spiritual element. And, and that's really the most important piece for me in healing or in, in being a healer and being a nurse is that there is a transcendent part of our being. And uh, I hadn't really experienced that in nursing. Holistic nursing kind of brought me full circle and I was able to implement uh, that calling, that mission that I have to be a nurse and a mm -hmm. healer. So that just happened so organically for you. Yes. Because holistic nur nursing, it really is the mind, the body, and the spirit. Is yes. That, and, the is that right? and the environment. And the environment. Yes. So when you become, you were a registered nurse for quite a, a while, and then you yes. became in, in, interested in the holistic nursing. Mm -hmm. um, is it a two? Did you say it was a two-year training? It's what about is it a two-year training. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And you do. Um, you're a professor. Yes, I Elms. am. Yes. And what is your concentration and what do you do? Is it um, in the nursing program that you're, you're working there yes. with? I work in the baccalaureate nursing program, the mm -hmm. BSN mm -hmm. at Elms. Uh, I've taught also at AIC oh. and uh, Anna Maria Colleges oh, right. and UMass a little bit as well. Nice. Yeah. So I teach uh, mental health nursing and I teach community public health nursing and a seminar course. That's very at important. At the Elms. Yeah. I really believe that. Mm -hmm. And with the mental health, with the nursing uh, holistically, is there anything that you can, that stands out as, as far as what you're, you, um, you teach um, with that, with the mental health, with holistic nursing? Mm -hmm. um, is there, it, is it, what it would be the different component? If for that being what, holistic? For, for holistic. Um, clients. To be a holistic nurse uh, at this time, there's very few that can full-time be, say, a, a practitioner of holistic nursing. Mm -hmm. But uh, we bring our holism into everything we do, whatever your specialty, if that's teaching, if that's med surge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really about being pres totally present mm -hmm. and uh, really uh, utilizing uh, nursing as a science and an art. So it's really using the art artistic part, the presence, sort of using a lot of mindfulness um, 
uh, many people are familiar with mindfulness and being present with people and kind of waking up. Oh, right. So you bring that sense of presence right. to uh, all of your nursing, whatever that might be. Um, in mental health nursing specifically mm. and holism, yes. Uh, we, um, there's more mental health nurses who are holistic nurses than any other specialty. Well, that kind of makes sense to me, mm -hmm. because I, I believe it's such a hard um, a area to be in for nurses, mm -hmm. because you, just, it just, you see such a huge um, um, a range of mental health issues mm -hmm. from very severe to maybe just um, situational. Correct. And I think that you need all that support um, as a nurse for yourself mm -hmm. when you're dealing with that. Is, it, is that something that you um, address to with your students? Absolutely. Self-care. So if you work in the field, whether that's a psychiatrist, a social worker, a nurse, a mental health worker, we see things in the mental health uh, populations that we serve that shows you something's going on besides on this plane. Mm -hmm. that there's something spiritual going on. There's a spiritual crisis many times. Uh, there's other spiritual elements that we can't really deal with. Mm -hmm. And so we, we know that we're just touching the surface in the way Western medicine approaches mental health crises. Yes. And so that's partly why we look outside. What, what can we do to really help these people really get to the core of what's going on with them? Mm -hmm. And holism, because it addresses the whole person, is really a wonderful modality and a framework and theoretical framework from which to address this. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So mental health, you must have seen so many changes happening mm -hmm. within your career. Um, Besides holistic um, nursing coming about in the 80s, mm -hmm. um, is there a crisis that you can see maybe that's really coming about now um, with some of the patients or clients that you have or even with your students? Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's social media or um, you know things that are happening mm -hmm. around what's going on in the world today. Mm -hmm. um, is there one thing that you think that's really impacting us, mental, our mental health? Is, is there? Well, that's a good question. I know. Um, I, uh, trauma, is, trauma is really what I believe to be the, uh, when we talk about addictions or mental health, they a lot of times say, what's the gateway? Well, I believe the gateway to uh, mental health issues and addiction is a traumatic experience. And our world is full of unfortunately, uh, fragmentation, people being abandoned, uh, stigma, all the different isms, racism, mm -hmm. and uh, ageism, all the different isms that uh, separate us. And so our whole world, people are being traumatized at different levels uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that shows up in, in people's uh, inability to cope with what's going on. And so they might turn to a substance or they, they might have a, a mental breakdown of some kind. You know, we used to call it a nervous breakdown. Right. Not being able to cope with the stressors that, that are in our world. Life is very difficult at this time. So uh, we see a rise in really almost every one of the um, different diagnoses in mental health among children. You see great rise in autism, ADHD, and suicide, uh, depression. And now, yes, right? and, and suicide, and, 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 little, yes. and, and small children, yes. young children. Yeah, yeah, and it's very, very serious. Um, and uh, we're not really doing a great job in in providing the care people need to recover and to reclaim their lives and go on and be empowered and be a productive member of society. No, I, I think we have a lot to do, a lot of work to do in our society when it comes to mental health and I think that we just scraped the surface of it. Mm -hmm. um, so with the holistic nursing, um, I know it, it's subjective when someone has trauma and, and how you recognize that and um, working with a, a patient or client, it, they may not even know this is something that could be hidden for them. Mm -hmm. um, is uh, and I and with the your students, it is kind of has to be kind of you, you touch upon it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, is there one thing that you bring um, to them that um, that they can take home for themselves? Is mm -hmm. there something that you you really emphasize 
on taking care of themselves for self-care for a nursing student or anyone that uh, any professor uh, profession that's taking care of um, the public. Um, well, the students uh, and all of us that work uh, as nurses from a holistic paradigm where we practice self-care mm -hmm. and we see ourselves as wounded healers. Mm -hmm. So out of our own struggles to find peace and wellness within ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, we're able to share with others uh, that. And I do that with my students. A lot of them have test anxiety, severe. Mm -hmm. right. um, they And many of them come in with their own trauma histories. They come in with anxiety, depression. Almost all of them have a relative that is touched by uh, addiction or mental health uh, problems. So it touches them very deeply. And I, I teach them, and they all, we go to the clinical settings, we go in the area to all the inpatient sites. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I tell the students, look for that thing that's well within your patients. Oh, there, there's beautiful. a part of them that's well, that's functioning highly, and you want to connect with what's right rather than what's wrong. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. And I teach them to not, uh, of course, stigmatize, uh, give trite advice, or be judgmental. Right. To, to just be, really provide a healing presence and a safe place for people to share uh, their suffering, their struggles in different ways. Right. And they, the students do well with it. It's it's quite beautiful. They're very afraid the first few weeks. Well, they're still young, usually, yeah. right? Yeah, well, they I mean, been they're on. still older <laughs> students. Um, right, but most of them are young. Right, and they're just getting to know themselves. Right, so it's, they're up kind of against the wall at the beginning and afraid, and the door right. locks. And then after a few weeks, they'll have a meaningful conversation, and they'll feel like they're really connected on a heart level with someone. Mm. And, and a lot of them then want to become a, a psychiatric uh, nurse. Right. At the beginning, I'll say, how many of you want to go into mental health nursing? I usually get one out right. of 60. <laughs> right. And it's by hard. the end, it might be five or 10. Wow. Uh, but at least they find it meaningful. And I also teach them therapeutic communication skills. Yes. So how, how they're able to uh, be with people that are in suffering, how to be with someone with trauma, and uh, what to say and just hold space for them. And, and holding space is really important when you're there with someone and, and not having to fill that space or that quietness or just being. And um, that may bring up a lot for themselves. You know, Absolutely. a lot of healing and it could be healing for them too, you yes. know, and, and then maybe the journaling and, and that kind of um, self-care um, does help too. I um, teach them to breathe, you know, some very huge. simple self-care things, but <sighs> and, uh, we, so we, we do breathing right? uh, before we go on the units. Mm -hmm. uh, we, before exams, I, I lead them in some sort of simple Tai Chi exercises, breath work and uh, really sort of uh, using mindfulness techniques. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I make them laugh yeah. uh, just, just to uh, loosen them up. Right. And uh, they, they find that to be helpful. And then they, the students, when they're working on the inpatient units, do a group. Mm -hmm. So they'll do some of the, many times a holistic, uh, more kind of a group. Maybe that's being creative with drawing. Maybe it's using music or drama. Uh, talking about different tools for uh, stress reduction, mm -hmm. and uh, they bring to that their own skills. Yes. Well, they're, everyone's new, unique in how mm -hmm. they express that, and the client will pick up on different things, right? And yeah. So, and for yes. themselves, too. Um, now, you also just told me that you became an elder. Is oh, that, yes. Right? Yes. And can you explain that to me, um, yeah. to the public? So holistic nursing has uh, local chapters. Mm -hmm. There's also a national organization. There's about 5,500 holistic nurses mm -hmm. right now. Uh, and then there's chapters. And so we have one big national conference, uh, usually in June. Mm -hmm. This year it's in Albuquerque, nice. the first week of June. I oftentimes do the drum circle I bet you'll be that. going to that. <laughs> uh, but uh, locally, we just started a chapter, and it's uh, meeting at Bay State. It's the third Thursday uh, of at, uh, let's see, what, 5 o'clock. Okay. And I could give you more information. Yeah, so we'll to, have that up um, at the end of the, sh the show, all right. that information. Um, the, is it each month? It's, it's every month. We take maybe one off for, uh, in the summer when people are vacationing. 
And what we're trying to do is to uh, provide a support system for one another. We have uh, speakers. You're able to get CEUs that you need oh, nice. to keep your license. And we're going to open it up to massage therapists and oh. physicians and uh, any, really anyone uh, who really cares about holistic kind of wellness and oh, health like topics to come together. It's a way to network and to uh, talk with one another, support each other because it's difficult uh, in this uh, Western medicine to it is. Uh, hold your place with the uh, holistic framework is different. It doesn't, it, it's more like a, a round peg, say in a square hole. We well, don't yes. quite make it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you need all that support that you can get from right. yeah, your colleagues. And mm -hmm. um, yes, absolutely. I, that's a beautiful and I would love to, to check that out. Yeah. So what next? What, February? The, well, we the third, just met the, the last second? night. Okay, so it will be. Um, whatever the, I, I'm okay. sorry, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, and, and we'll I did, have it did, I, I was asked, uh, it was my honor to be asked to be uh, the elder of the group uh, last night. There's, you know, officers, president, and treasurer, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had my first meeting, and uh, they've asked me to be the elder because I've been a holistic nurse around 15 years. Wow. And so what does that mean? What does that entail when you're an elder? Kind of just it's like sort of, holding... Well, I have a lot of experience nationally and uh, different... Uh, I, I've done modalities in this for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of experience and maturity to bring most of the uh, other officers just became holistic nurses uh, this past summer. Yes. They just took the training. Yes, so, yeah. so they're very uh, sincere and um, you know, there's a real beauty about them, but they're young. Yeah. And so I can give them the wealth of my wisdom experience that I've gained over the years. And you I, do have a lot. Thank you. Uh, yes. Can you tell me a little bit more about all those other healing um, modalities that you have that you sure. you've kind of built up over the years? Mm -hmm. That I really love how you weaved it all in to what you're doing. And I do know about the sh uh, shamanic and the drumming because <laughs> I, you know, we've had you um, at Amethyst Brook, um, which I've never done before mm -hmm. um, prior to meeting you, mm -hmm. and. It really is something that just hits the core of your being, and you can't really explain it. It's something that you you have to try um, and and experience it yourself. Um, but I would love for you to tell me a little bit more about sure. all those other. So in our, uh, I was introduced to many of the holistic modalities when I was taking my training in holistic nursing. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, they have different uh, specialist experts in, say, aromatherapy, guided imagery, music therapies, uh, all the energy, healing, Reiki, therapeutic touch, come in and train us. And we have like a little a sample of, of that work as we're being trained. So I was introduced to many different modalities, and uh, they tell us, the leaders, as they're training you, certain ones will pull at you. Certain ones you'll feel like, oh, I, you know, I want to do that. I want to mm -hmm. learn that. Right. So the ones that really jumped out at me, uh, the first was drumming, was therapeutic drumming. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took uh, training through Remo Drums, has a training called Health Rhythms for uh, those in the healthcare professions to bring it to they, they use it through uh, Cancer Connection, will use it with their clients. Okay. Uh, we do it, I, I've done it all th in mental health on all the inpatient units, addiction uh, uses it. Uh, they use it in jail settings, in the forensic uh, nursing area. It's also just, I, I do it, community drumming circles. Yes. They're on the beach, uh, there's drumming everywhere, and uh, there's research that shows that it does change your immune system, it builds community, and it's creative. And right. every and you participate, you're not just sitting there watching music, right. you're, you're all producing music. And so there's an entrainment that happens that's quite healing. It's almost like a cellular level, isn't it? Yes, The, the it sounds, is. right? Yeah. Yeah. So that really uh, resonated with me, and uh, since then I've, I've done groups for years, uh, and I play Native American flute and many percussion instruments. Yeah. I also make drums and rattles. And The flute is um, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. And then the next thing I went on to was aromatherapy. Yes. Uh, it's about a two-year training. I um, want to uh, give tip my hat to Kathy Duffy, who is my, she's a local uh, herbalist and aromatherapist. Nice. And she was my trainer for that. Uh -huh. And uh, I was trained in 35 different essential oils and their uses. 
and then you have to do a research project. Wow, and two years in that is yeah. really, is that how you're, you're making your own oil? You're, you're... You'll learn what they're used for and then mm -hmm. I can do, um, I'm trained at the level of in a hospital setting, I can make custom blends for, uh, for whatever someone needs. Mm -hmm. And do you use that a, a bit? Do you use that? Uh, I, I, I somewhat, use it or? more, I, I haven't had the opportunity in a hospital yet, they've yeah, not well, allowed I'm me sure. to use it. I'm sure that could be uh, an issue. Cooley, it, I know at Cooley <laughs> Dickinson Hospital they do, uh, oh. uh, Kathy Duffy actually did use it on the inpatient unit oh. and they still use it Good there. Good for them. Yeah. That's and nice. uh, I, I use it in my private practice uh, for healing. I make them for people that come to me um, for healing sessions. And I also make a um, flower essence uh, that oh. I use as well. Yeah, those are amazing. <laughs> so you have a business. Yes, I and, do. And what is the name of that business? Windhorse Holistic Strategies. Yes. Uh -huh. And you have that out of your home. Correct. Right. I, and I work out of different Which is a beautiful, centers. It's a gorgeous space. I love <laughs> that you. space. Um, and yes, and you quite a few different places. Yes, right? I do in the valley. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I, I educate. I do classes on uh, different things related to shamanism, which is one of my... Um, what is shamanism? <laughs> I know that's a huge... <laughs> yes, ah. Okay, shamanism and like, really? <laughs> has been... Uh, <laughs> around it's the earliest uh, spiritual uh, I guess I would say way of life that's found in every culture for a hundred thousand years however long we think the earth has been here right and uh, most of us uh, now would think of it as the person that, that in a tribal or uh, a uh, tribal society or culture was the medicine person of the tribe and they um, did healing physical healing, they might do something with the weather to help with hunting, mm -hmm. they, they were like a, a counselor, they were like the priests, they were the person that people went to uh, when they needed help or guidance for whatever body, mind, spirit was That's going a on. Of, a lot of responsibility. It, it was. The crops, the rain. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> right? And uh, there has been a, a great resurgence and in interest in shamanism um, over the past, I would say maybe 50 years. And uh, so we have those practices coming back and uh, there's a lot of interest in it. Um, I think it's, uh, many people are moving somewhat away from the religious systems established yeah. uh, because they find them, might, might find them stale or, right. or not really vibrant and able to relate uh, to today. I believe that too. So it's more yeah. of a spiritual orientation and it's a direct experience of the divine that each person's able to connect with and that really uh, resonated with me and uh, I really got into a lot of my healing work myself through um, an Inuit shaman named Mika who did a soul retrieval on me that helped me uh, recover from my trauma. From your trauma because you had quite a lot of trauma Correct. Uh, earlier on. Yes. Um, now this isn't something that you just take a weekend course to no. become, right? No. Uh, Tell it, me a little bit it, it about is that. a way. It is a way of life. It's yes. a it's a practice, just like uh, you you might practice Hinduism or, or yoga or different uh, other kind of uh, practices. Um, and what exactly did you ask me? <laughs> <laughs> so, so how long would it would it take someone to become a shaman if they want if, if this is well, we, something we, I would could, not want to it's, say because it's, I yeah, right right shamanic because, practitioner uh, shamanic practitioner yes not a sh right. Um, <laughs> Is that there's a lot of there's a lot involved with that. I teach a number of classes. My teacher um, is Sandra Ingerman. Yes. And uh, I teach an introductory introduction to shamanism class, which is a one day or a weekend training, mm -hmm. and that would be to teach you to learn to journey and mm -hmm. connect in the lower, middle, and upper world. Mm -hmm. uh, then I do uh, classes on death and dying. Uh, a shamanic practitioner, you learn to help uh, spirits that haven't crossed over after death to cross over. It's a very beautiful work. Um, beautiful. I, I love doing that work, and it goes well with nursing and I was just hosp hospice. Say, it, it goes with the hospice part very of that. Very much so, uh, really being present with someone. That would be really something wonderful for someone. Can, is there someone that, could you do a CEU with that? Could you tie that? A death I, and dying, would that I, be included? It, it could it be, would yes. Be, Okay. And like a death doula, it would be sort of on, okay. on the line of a death doula. Okay. Uh, I teach um, classes, I, I, I would teach a class on extraction, depossession, mm -hmm. um, which is, might seem a little odd to our audience, but right. um, 
I believe there are spirits that can sort of uh, influence us, whether that's from the ancient lineage, karmic uh, kind of a thing, or spirit that hasn't crossed over can become attached and cause illness or discomfort or anxiety or something of this nature. Yes. So I do that. I do house clearings uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, soul retrieval is my very favorite, uh, and I think I'm, it's my best modality, uh, it's, it's which is really uh, looking at is if a person experiences a traumatic experience, a part of them moves off and, and uh, splits so it gets, off. It gets closed off. Yes. It's like almost they disassociate that part. Exactly. They don't want to remember it. or Exactly. Yeah. And so uh, as a shamanic practitioner, uh, I've learned to uh, journey and find that soul part and bring that back to the person so that they can become more, or more whole, mm -hmm. which is really the whole point of holistic nursing is to help someone find wholeness and balance in their body, mind, spirit. Right. So uh, that practice uh, really can help someone who's experienced trauma uh, when they go for counseling, so to speak, uh, all of them is not there to receive healing. So to have that part be retrieved and integrated into the individual helps them to be present and then to find recovery and healing and integrate all their parts mm -hmm. back. Yeah, it's, it's so complicated, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And with a Western medicine, um, they really, it, it, it doesn't touch upon any of this really. Um, um, no. A lot of the mental health part of it or the spiritual part of it and we are spirit um, yes. and we have so much that we take in mm -hmm. that we don't even know right right and so this is where the soul retrievals are just I've had it done so it was just <laughs> an amazing experience and it helped me quite a bit and, you, and I've had it done as well yes yeah, that was my, <laughs> my doorway so to speak yes. into the work yes yeah, yeah. And, and you did have a lot of trauma, um, healing, um, um, and teaching that yes. you, you went away for um, not too long ago. Yeah, right? I, I've developed uh, my, uh, well, there's a thing called trauma-informed care that uh, you do find uh, all over, in the, everywhere in the United States, mm -hmm. and many counselors, social workers, uh, nurses, you know, have trauma-informed care mm -hmm. as a foundation for the work that we do with mental health mm -hmm. uh, patients. However, um, in the vein of the wounded healer, um, which, I, which I live by, uh, I've had to look, seek help for my own uh, trauma. Mm -hmm. And through that, uh, besides soul retrieval, uh, another avenue that's been very uh, helpful to me is the work of Teal Swan. Mm -hmm. She's based in Utah, mm -hmm. and she has a very significant, uh, powerful story, uh, really heart-wrenching of really being a, a slave, mm -hmm. a sex slave uh, to a man in her teens, and he abused her in every possible way. Mm. And she received a lot of revelation around that, and uh, is a very, she's a very interesting uh, person, mm -hmm. and she's developed her own, some of her own methods for uh, uh, addressing trauma, mm -hmm. and one is called the completion process. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm one of her mm -hmm. uh, practitioners, and mm -hmm. I went and trained for this. And the idea behind this is going to the root cause of someone's trauma. Uh, we may have trauma as an adult, but many times it's linked to something in childhood, mm -hmm. usually in the first five years. And so using sort of a guided imagery, um, uh, kind of a framework, you lead someone back to this first time they had the trauma, mm -hmm. and, and then you use different kind of um, talk therapy and kind of guide them along in mm -hmm. order to uh, bring back parts of themselves and change that story so that it has a different outcome in their life rather than uh, having all the fragmentation and destruction that trauma usually has. Right, with the communication. Right? Yeah. Right. So, so this I, is just it's, it's amazing, <laughs> um, everything that you're doing. Thank and you. Um, I highly suggest that um, if, if anyone is looking to do some inner work, um, self-care work, or, or um, um, trying to figure things out, um, that seeing um, like Jan, mm -hmm. or someone like Jan, um, would be a very good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, I do spiritual yeah. direction as well, and uh, I volunteer at the hospital 
as a spiritual uh, counselor. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I really love that work as mm -hmm. well, sort of mm -hmm. again weaving in um, the uh, spiritual part into helping someone recover from their suffering, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Well, I'm, I'm so mm -hmm. ex happy that you were, you were able to come on today. Thank you very and much. And I think we could probably do a, a, a couple more shows. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that um, having you come on for some drumming would be really oh, great. Oh, I'd love that. All right. Thank you, mm -hmm. Denise. Thank you for coming on. It's been my so, pleasure. Well, thank you for joining us today. And remember, get inspired, get healthy, and have some fun along the way. Thank mm -hmm. you.